Hi everyone, it's James here from EADC Components. Uh, I'm a little bit sick at the moment, so you'll have to uh, excuse my voice. I've been sick for like a week. It's been a while uh, trying to get a video out to you. Um, so I apologize for that, and I did promise I'd do an anodizing video of my little anodizing setup that I use at home, and, um, and now today is the day. Um, I haven't really used this stand before, so I apologize again if it's a bit low or it's not quite right. It's it's new and exciting and I don't know. Anyway, cool. So I'm just going to, I haven't scripted this. Uh, I haven't scripted this video at all. So you'll just have to bear with me and I'll try to make it as concise as possible, um, but also have all the information because I think that anodizing is one of those things that gives the f finishing product, uh, like the finishing touch to your part. And I think it's really important that um, if you are going to make a product, you can give someone something that isn't finished or something that is um, completely finished. It looks great and uh, that's usable right away. Um, Alright, I hope you can see this, and look, I'm not a low angle kind of guy. Um, okay, so the difference between anodyne, uh, okay, so I think it was really important to give someone a finished product when you're going to say, yeah, I can make you this part. Um, some people are okay with just taking a piece of aluminium and it's been machined, it's what they want. Uh, maybe for the engineering spec, it doesn't require any sort of surface coating or anything like that. And that's okay. Like, that's cool. I've given people a lot of parts that aren't anodized or coated in any way, shape or form. And yes, you can alodyne it, uh, which I've done, and then paint things. That's totally cool too. Aladine will kill you. It's the same stuff that got into the ground in Aaron Brockovich and caused all those people to die of cancer and you know all that stuff. Anyway, it's really, really bad for you, and I don't want to use it. Uh, even aluminium on its own, they're now uh, finding that uh, in your bloodstream reduces your sperm count as well. So just be aware that anything to do with aluminium should always probably have a set of nitrile gloves handy, and if you're going to anodize. You need your safety glasses because you're playing with acid and wear your damn gloves for God's sake. Anyway, now that we've got that out of the way, uh, anodizing. I wouldn't endeavor to anodize unless you were going to be using it a lot. It's not expensive to set up, but it's one of those things that if you do set it up, it takes up space in your shop and you can't just pack it all up, put it away, and then pull it all out and use it again. If you're going to be making parts a lot, set it up, have it always there, find a space. Cool. But the advantages are really cool. Like, I mean, this, you know, compared to a finished part that looks like this, and I just drilled a big hole in the middle of it uh, just to show you, you know, like you can engrave stuff that, you know, anodize the outside of it and then chuck it back on the CNC and engrave it and have these really cool popping colors. Now that's black. Uh, it's also really important to remember that your surface finish will be the same pre-anodized. So if it's crap and it looks all scratchy and you haven't got all the sur surface marks out of it, they will still come up through the anodized. Um, get get it looking as good as you want. Now that's an, a natural finish that's slightly almost burned. Uh, it was anodized for a long time, so it's a really thick layer, and I just sealed it like that because I thought it just looked great. And that's a dipped one. Now that was a uh, muzzle brake. Um, that I haven't quite typed and finished yet, but I think it looks cool, man. It looks badass. It's all, almost like Halo. Uh, it's supposed to fit an AR-15, but um, I don't know anyone with an AR-15, so if you want to try it and just tap it and give it a go, that's cool. Uh, but I've dipped it, and you can see there's a gradient to it, which looks really cool. Uh, so basically, when I put it in, I clipped it like this. You know, dip the bottom in for longer, and then just the top in for less time, and you get this cool gradiated look, and I actually reckon this, hopefully it's functional, I don't know, but it looks badass. I put these little things in to maybe make a locking thing, and I just thought, you know what, in the end you can probably just put a big ring spanner around it and crank it on. Anyway, that looks cool. So anyway, I got all the colors here, and I'm going to explain how to do it all now. I'm also drinking a coffee, so just one moment. So good egg. Alright, coffee. Okay. I, it's 
two o'clock in the morning, all right? I want my coffee. Okay, so basically I'm going to go through my anodizing setup as if I would use it and what you're going to need. Okay, and I bet you, no, I didn't throw it out. Thank God for that. Right, so basic ingredients first. You're going to need some acid, either sulfuric acid or I use this, uh, sodium bisulfate. Google anodizing sodium bisulfate. There's a guy on the internet, I can't remember his name right now, he has a really good uh, tutorial on this. I make the acid bath a tiny bit stronger, I just find it works a little bit better. Um, but I actually think the sulfuric acid, which I've used before, gives a much better, well not much, but a slightly better finish pre-colour if you just want to clear anodize. But this still works really well and uh, I've, I use it all the time now, I don't use it, it's too hard to find sulfuric acid. This stuff uh, I can find at Bunnings for $10 for 3 kilos, awesome. Okay, you're going to need a power supply. This one here is 20, uh, 2000, uh, sorry, 24 volt, uh, 10 amp. Don't skimp on a power supply and trying to make some crap, you need something you can adjust and play with. I uh, highly recommend anything from JCAR or make your own if you can, awesome. Couple of buckets. For heating purposes I use these gas made stoves, they're 10 or so dollars from Bunnings each. And as you can see, like I have it set up and this is how you need to do it, you know, you need to have a setup. you can't just pull it all apart and whatever when you need it. Uh, you've got your <coughs> buckets of dye. <coughs> And that white bucket over there is sodium hydroxide. I've left some. That white bucket over there is sodium hydroxide. You're going to need some of that too. That's a D smart agent. So if we were to be anodizing a part, here's how we roll. Hopefully, you can see everything that I'm doing from about there. Right. Take your part. Take it over to the bath and degrease it. Use some degrease it, give it a good scrub. If it's not clean, it's not going to work very well. Make sure your surface finishes how you want it. Degrease it, clean it. And at this stage, you need some titanium wire and you wrap the titanium. I've got some hooks here. Whatever you do, it's important and super important to make sure that that connection is solid as a rock. Okay, you're going to leave a mark on the anodizing, that's just life. If you've got a part that has threads in it, put a bolt in it. Lock the bolt in, um, you know, as, as good as you can. So make your threads a little bit tight uh, when you do actually tap it. Um, you know, if it's sitting on the threads, it'll be a nice solid connection. Then you put, you know, your titanium around a bolt with a nut holding the titanium to a bolt. You know, I'm pretty sure, you know, there's a nut on that. You would put the titanium up there, thread that in and put the bolt up on this end, right? Awesome. Cool. That should be pretty self-explanatory. So you've done that, you've got your titanium on, put it in the D-Smart bath. I leave it in there for three, four, five minutes until I'm happy that the sur surface finish is corroded uniformly. It's got a nice, almost bright color to it. It actually looks really cool in that state. Um, when you're happy with that, um, pull it out. Uh, into your cleaning bath. Now you got, sorry, I didn't mention this earlier, but this is really, really important. All of these baths have got distilled water, okay? Distilled water, don't use regular water. It's like $2 for a gallon for distilled water. Use distilled water, cool. So into your cleaning bath, which just gets all the um, sodium hydroxide off, uh, hydroxide off. Just remember that that is Drano and it's a base and you're about to put it in an acid so let's get the, the stuff off just quickly give it a good shake um, and then pop it into your bath with the ratio of uh, acid that uh, is on the website I can't remember what it is it's two o'clock in the morning just look it up it's just Google right okay so pop it in the bath turn your power supply on and set your amps. Now there's a cal some calculators online which are really cool. It's all done about surface area, right? Work it out and it'll tell you how long it needs to build one micron. I wouldn't want to build more than that if I wanted a really bright popping color. Um, the, the more you anodize, the darker it'll be, okay? Um, and the more amps you put in through it, the shorter the time to anodize, but also the more heat in the bath. Now you need to keep the bath less than about 35 degrees. Like 25 is ideal. Uh, there's two ways you can do that. One is with ice blocks. Uh, the other way is get like an aquarium pump that pumps water through and have an ambient temperature of, you know, 28 degrees or so. 
So you're pumping air through, it's keeping it cool, keeps the impurities to the side of the bath because the bubbles come out and push the impurities to the side. And you can actually pump a little bit more current through it without raising the temperature and anodize things quicker. Sounds really good. The other thing you need to know is this ratio, and I don't know what, whose ratio it is, but uh, your cathode, which can be lead or aluminium 6061 or 6063, which is ideal. 6063 apparently is the new ideal thing but the ratio is three anode to one cathode. Now the anode is the part you're anodizing and the cathode is the part that you have the negative side on, which um, enables the, the oxidization to take aluminium from the part, take it and put it onto this and um, leaving you with a deep oxide layer that you can dye. Uh, so your bath has to be kept at temperature controlled and you can do that with your amperage. Now I sit at 1 or 2 amps, that'll do everything in like 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes depending, but I can run it up to like 8 amps, but you can burn your part, you can strip away so much aluminium that it uh, doesn't actually ever anodize and puts out heaps of gas and just, yeah, it's not good. So um, that's something you're going to need to play with yourself, okay? While I'm anodizing, I get my baths turned on, which has my dye and my nickel acetate. Now, I do use nickel acetate sometimes, otherwise I just use built boiling water. You don't have to use nickel acetate. A lot of people say, oh, you need it for this and that and all that sort of thing. It actually doesn't affect the strength in the surface, okay? It does lock in colors, but so does water. Uh, nickel acetate is more for a finishing effect. It's a, it's, uh, it makes things look a lot more polished, but you can still polish anything, right? Um, I use my, most of the time, like this has got old nickel acetate, it's mostly water now, I I, don't, I haven't changed that in six months, it just sits there, I know, I know, I probably should, right, but anyway, it still looks cool, alright, um, and I will probably change it now that I'm thinking about it. So, you've got your, your gases on, now your dye, 60 degrees, I put my finger in, if it burns me, too hot. If it's too cold, I uh, and turn it up. I, my wife will not let me use her cooking scale thermometer. Bitch. <laughs> she's, like, she's awesome. Um, these are her pots as well, right? So she let me do that, so she's really cool. Um, but yeah, I stick my finger in. If it's really hot, I'm like, yep, sweet, that's 60 odd degrees. I put my part in there, leave it in there for as long as I need. I check it all the time, especially with colors like blues, reds, yellows, golds, um, oranges, you need to check it every minute or so, just quickly pull it out, uh, agitate it a bit, have a look, otherwise you'll get a really deep industrial blue instead of that really high popping colour, and I don't actually have any colour, all my coloured stuff's gone, um, yeah, so then once you've got the colour, this should be boiling by then, and um, you just drop it in there for half an hour into some boiling water. Um, the boiling water doesn't have to be distilled, but just use distilled water. It, 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 if you do everything once properly, it'll be done properly forever. Sorry, I'm sick and I'm so, so, catching up with me. Cool. Uh, now, is that clear as mud? Probably, right? Um, lead. You can use lead as a cathode, but just don't. I used to. It doesn't make any difference. The the aluminium works really well and 6063 is 6063 is readily available anyway. So is 6061. Uh, I use these as my cathodes, um, depending on the size of the part. Um, and they've always worked really, really well. Cool. Now, if you have any questions, hit us up. Leave a message. I will definitely reply. Um, by the way, your sodium hydroxide bath make it really strong, really strong, like scary strong. I've got like, uh, I don't know, five, six, seven liters of water in that jug and, you know, half a thing of Drano, like it's, and it needs to be, you know, you would just want to leave it in there for like two or three minutes and just rip that stuff off and then chuck it in the thing, no, chuck it into the, the bath. I would recommend air bubbles for both baths. I don't have, I'm waiting to buy like a spare big air pump from my CNC to upgrade it, and then the old air pump out of the CNC will go into the bars. And I use the Chinese big aluminium AL, whatever they are, um, aquarium pumps. They're um, 140 liter a minute is on the CNC at the moment, which is great, but they go to 450. Now I'm gonna put that on the CNC, because you turn it on and it runs and it just blasts it, chips it. Oh. It's like having a compressor running, but it's so low wattage. 
uh, for the amount of airflow that you don't have to run a giant compressor all day. It's, it pushes air, air and coolant through, it's great. So anyway, that one's going to come here and the, the big one's going to go into the CNC room. Uh, but any questions about the anodizing? Um, the mixed ratios for the dyes, uh, I get them from Caswell Australia. Um, that one here for you. Because they're cheap, I know they work. They're cheap, I know they work. Um, some are 20 bucks, some are 50 bucks, but whatever, you know, like it goes a long way. You'll be dying for years with, with that much stuff. Uh, it's important to, if you want to use RIT dye, apparently RIT, R I T or R I T Z or something, you buy it at um, Coles, Woolies, things like that. Apparently they work too. Um, but the reason I use these cans, if you are going to set this up, is I just put uh, this included in the cost because they're like 50 cents or a dollar each. You buy like 14 for 10 bucks or something. Um, so if I have a job, I just include a dollar in my cost for the anodizing for a can each because you know this only these cans only do maybe two or three boils of a pot. Um, so you know it's easy to cost. It's easy to add your costs. Um, and then you know it's time you set it up you can walk away you set a timer I'd set my phone alarm walk away do something come back do it again anyway I hope this has been informative um, I hope that you can uh, justify spending like I don't know it's a hundred bucks if that and and the tables like they sit here because I use it you know like uh, all my parts eventually get anodized for something and you can really see like I mean this one I didn't even bother polishing the surface and that but it makes a crappy old piece of aluminium look like something that was intended to be really cool like you know this was something like this you know I could bore the center of that out and engrave it and say like you know EADC you know suck a dick whatever and um well yeah no legit if someone's got an AR-15 and wants to screw this onto the end of their barrel and then have a crack with it and tell me how it goes let us know because it's uh You'd be the only one with it and it kind of looks halo i don't know i don't play halo but i, I think it looks pretty cool but anyway let us know hit us up uh it's yours for free just pay me the postage and uh give me some feedback anyway um but uh i hope this is clear oh yeah by the, by the way before i go with your titanium you, uh you can also clip stuff uh like your titanium rod onto objects and stuff just be aware that you're always going to have a mark you're always going to leave a mark right so when you anodize just be aware yeah, i can't stress enough how strong the connection needs to be because it needs to get uh, pr uh, protected from oxide layer so well, you, ca you can't just hook something like that all right you need to have something let's say make a hook and jam it into a hole so it's like dug into a hole right uh, you can put clips on the outside if you don't care and you're gonna like do something on the side you can clip or something on like that alternatively put wires through and twist wires on that's another one find some titanium metal clips uh, but one of my favorites if I was to anodize let's say this and there's a thread in the middle which there is I'd use a titanium bolt and um, you know two nuts that would sit here with a piece in between it that's a really neat trick and uh, works very well anyway guys good night uh, James here at EADC signing off uh, I'm gonna do some milling I got some parts that just came out for dudes laser tag things like skirmish but with lasers which is cool uh, so that's just got done um, cool guys have a good day and uh, next video hopefully won't be too far out